for getting pregnant out of wedlock, you lose all rights to call yourself a church. Uh, by the way, um, a uh, half hour uh, maximum was reached. I uh, missed a little bit. Okay. I uh, re started it okay. uh, as a new one. Okay. Yeah. Beside marriages? Uh, uh, that's besides the point. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that poem at the end again. And then just because I thought I performed it pretty well and I just looked at the moment. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like to me, well, I'm married and haven't had sex in a while. I'm like, okay, well, we've made a lot of sex anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll do that poem again at the end. Just yeah. Because I want it on my. Who was next? Next? Uh, um, oh. You want to start going around and doing everyone? Well, I want to get us three because those are the only ones I'm putting online. Okay. Eventually, not okay. like tomorrow or anything. But. Yeah, after the contest. So uh, in case we perform any of these. Well, I'm gonna. Yeah. It does. That that has nothing to do. With it. it's oh. just I have other things to do. <laughs> gotcha. I guess that. Okay. Well. This is a poem I wrote uh, after visiting, or while visiting, a park that was very close to my ex-spouse's neighborhood. It's called Last Sunset. How is it I have never been here? Why didn't you ever take me? Or did you, and was I too resistant to the idea, prejudiced? too in love with my own little pedigreed place, too afraid I would have to change to even look beyond my very own skin. What happened to bring me here now? Am I braver now, wiser, eyes more open, mouth more relaxed, fists loosened? Am I better for having been hurt? Is there, at last, something to that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger nonsense? Is there something to that face your greatest greatest fear and you can face anything bullshit? What was your greatest fear? Was it me? Is that why you were finally brave enough to go? One day I hope to see you in all the guts and glory you have found since all your fears came true. We can watch the sunset over this abandoned beach, braver, Wiser, eyes more open, mouths loosened, palms up, upraised. You didn't ever take me here, but in the end, you did. Thank you for this last sunset. Mm. It's funny that it takes a poetry reading that you're a speaker in to have that face-to-face, brain-to-brain, sit-down conversation with yourself. I haven't written anything good in a while. You haven't written anything good. Damn, we haven't written anything good in way too long. Then the oh, shit, moment of knowing that the reading is tomorrow, today, tonight, now. <laughs> Even though you started rifling through all your stuff Monday, you read through your old pages and go, damn, was I really that whiny? Who wants to hear that? It's not relevant, not now, you can't connect to it. It's just some upchucked print on old paper. Something that used to be you that you just can't connect to. And as the clock ticks, you realize, I'm doomed. Gonna have to fake it, forget about trying to make it. And then what was supposed to be your comic relief intro is now a glorified rambling piece of prose from the memory books to type and build on and use for your next time. <laughs> I don't have any really angsty stuff. Um, I mean, other than being angry. It's a shame. Angry, I mean. <clears throat> um, this one I wrote for my friend's wedding. I don't think I've read it out loud, to be fair. Um, he's a hip hop artist, um, so if you catch any rhythm, that's what it is. 
One step in the darkness, the starkness we feel with one another like no other. We love despite the fights. I cook, you're raw, and that's all we need to remember. Together we're meant to be, eventually the chemistry binding becomes freeing. Now believe me, the difficulty of staying bound in this world is we'll be whirled in different directions. But you're my event horizon. It begins and ends with you. We're newly wed, it's true, joined us like the best chains. Life brings inevitable pain, but we choose joy over suffering. With your arms, in your arms, I'm the person I'm supposed to be, opposed to being fake. No, I'm authentic, and you're the pen, my nepenthe, and your love is like an odyssey. I'm out to sea, but you're with me, my buoy, in the dirty waters of Lake Erie. You keep my head up, you keep my head up. When I get fed up like binging, you keep me from purging. Your love is no dirge, but an exaltation. I scream from the ceiling of the world that I'll always be your guy, and you'll always be my girl. We see each other's imperfections without dissection. I love you certainly, fervently, perfectly. If you're ready, go ahead. This is my tattoo poem. It's called Scars on the Skin. I pretend my soul is written on my skin with needled ink. And I can hide or show with a flick of the sleeve or a casual sweeping aside of a hair what no scientist or shaman has ever told in a thousand years of poetry and prose, in a hundred thousand miles of moving tongues and flipping pages and stolid lips, and a single silent breath that stretches ribs and flexes vertebrae and raises skin streaked, streaked or not with black and white, the scars that prove time is real and man is mortal. And we pretend our souls are not, but are written on the sky more indelibly than the stars, like scars on the skin of time. Of all the things I've ever written, I think I only have one committed to memory. And I'll say it, and then I'll tell you the really funny story behind it. It's called insomnia. I cannot fall asleep, for the demons will come out and play. But my eyelids are so heavy and I've had a busy day. So I'll take a long cold shower and lots of sugar I will eat. Yet all of this is foolishness for my body's craving sleep. The darkness is inviting and for a while all is fine. Until my thoughts start wandering and flow freely just like wine. The demons sit me at their table and have made me their special guest. They taunt me and they tease me, telling me I have to rest. Um, uh, something about being able to play... The long story short of this whole poem was, I couldn't fall asleep in math class. Oh. And I have narcolepsy, so you can't sleep in class. And I wrote this poem, and I got it published in The Plain Dealer. And my name and my school, which is a Lutheran high school, I got so many calls from people. Do you know Jesus? Are you okay? I'm like, <laughs> they literally thought, I was being possessed by demons, and I was writing about being possessed by demons. I'm like, do you not see? It says I went to a Lutheran high school. I do know who Jesus is. I was writing about not being able to fall asleep in class. And they all took it so literally. I, it was one of those hysterical moments that you're just like, wow. Maybe you should be careful what you write and publish, because people <laughs> really take these literally. It was amazing. Jesus, he invented Ambien, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like that war of. So much. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was just. It's like uh, war of the worlds all over again. It was, it was, and unfortunately, I had one of those um, those names that you could find in the uh, old-fashioned white pages. Huh. So there was only one of us in there. Oh, here we go. Um, the demons start their playing and have made me their special guest. They sit me at their table telling me I have to rest. They twist and turn my words, they tie me to the chair. They're dancing on the table and they're pulling out my hair. They're dragging up the secrets, all the ones I couldn't keep. I'm begging and I'm pleading, please just let me get some sleep. I wake up with a start and for now I'm in control until I fall asleep and then the demons rule my soul. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, that was that. Yeah. I love good stories.
Well, speaking of God, why is there suffering in the world? Is God dead or weak or a fool or a jerk? Or are we just alone in the chaos with pain receptors and responses evolved to persuade against death, keep us limping toward the next generation? Why do we have a sense of justice in a world so unfair and so wrong? Why not just live day to day in a hedonic haze? It would be easier than trying just to live, not to die. Nothing. No reason exists. It's a farce. It's a game with no rules and no winning. So why bother hurting? Why pretend there's a meaning or any such thing as a promise or a hope that could break or be broken? My above-average brain is straining its 29 years of hard lessons on overdrive, grasping wisdom on fi from 5,000 years and four continents, and still there's no traction. I'm driving in mud, spinning tires till they burn, and the smell is a voice saying, just give up. It's not worth it. But maybe if I could get out, I could walk, I could breathe, I could see what's ahead of this, if only I leave it behind, this old question that's driving me mad. Mm. church poem, and then I was thinking I might do the grandma poem, because both of them together are this probably about to And then we've got, actually, so, um, are you, take off you all of your covers. comfortable doing the shaving piece without shaving? I or don't no? know, I don't think it's ready yet. Okay. Plus I don't have a copy. Oh yeah, I didn't print it yet. So there's your answer for Okay, that. I guess not. Okay, so for the people at home and here, so they have a. They you're have a, shaving that piece off. Oh, oh. oh. whoa! For today, for today. <laughs> they they have a. Um, so I wrote a piece about uh, not shaving, and it's gonna be performing in such a way that Lori's gonna put uh, shaving cream on her legs and pretend to shave, and that's. I'm really hoping I can then lick shaving cream. I I think you should. Yeah. All right. Should. Yes. Will there be uh, yeah, blood involved? Hopefully. Like, yeah, right? Because <laughs> then at least that will be non toxic. Yeah. And people will be like, what's a shaving cream? Taste it. Oh, it's whipped cream. I'm black, I'm Yeah. Okay. Or a uh, vegan. Even worse. Huh? Okay, so aquafaba is the liquid in the can of chickpeas. And if you whip it really uh, firmly for like five minutes, it becomes basically like whipped cream. But you would have to like get out your hand mixer and be like doing the hand mixer. And then I can't have one of those fancy pens. That's yeah, like, like an agro placer. Well, well, no. Yeah, all right. He's like, vegan. Out of chickpeas. But you'd be <laughs> hilarious. That would be, yeah. All right. Um, we got time to figure it out. Yes. Yeah. Although it is next weekend, not the one coming up, but the one after that. So. Yeah, it's still time. Um, all right, I'll do another one. I'm going to do another love song. <laughs> Uh, I was trying to write a love poem, that's what this is called. There's a feeling of pulling and pushing away. E even ever-present kisses do not hold like before. The honeymoon phase might be over, but there's more. There is a partnership based on affection, caring, dedication to the dreams of each other. There is desire to inspire explosions of emotions, to bring life and thought, to renew a building maybe crumbling, to unlock a deeper connection and discover new excitement, to discover more than duty, to serve self as well as everyone else. There is hope of someday inspiring ecstasy, superb, perfect passion, when back massages bring more reaction than penetration, confidence is water circling a drain. There is belief that the struggle between doing something which pays and something unrewarding can be overcome. That's what higher education is for. Finally, there is a wish against finality, no end, no separation, for struggle to bring strength, for water circling the drain to be filtered and reused to hydrate passion, for the building that may be crumbling to never collapse, to stand on, for the moon phase to flow from honey to full. You are angel, honey.
dripping sweet over feathered wings from a darkened place fell into my lap. I am the hunter, and you are my prey. Illuminated moonlit paths, beautifully accented, light the way. Barefoot through the evening dew, chills my skin, quickens my pace, racing to your entry point from where you were to where I am. You've fallen before, and I, I played the role of savior and saint, the role of siren and seductress, temptress to stay on this earthly plane. Your honey, my angel, drips too sweet to let such a source wane. My earthly shell is no match for your purity and grace. In the darkness of the night, by candle flame, can I reveal my true face. I am psyche to your eros, bare ankles and cheeks flushed. Your laughter follows me, warms me, a true lady's blush. A maze of thorns I'd suffer and endure to receive your gaze, your touch. The trail of pennies leads me to your door, breathless, restless, searching for more. A door from world to world. What demons lurk waiting for me if I step through? What price to pay for time with you? The fog thickens, it darkens, as if to warn this path is treacherous. And as the night's rain falls against my breast, your honey still strips too sweetly under these uncelestial orbs, and I find that I cannot rest. At your door with pennies I wait. This one doesn't have a title yet. I don't think I've ever shown it or read it to anybody before. It was then that I realized I love her. It's the way she always made sure that strawberries grew in the yard, and there were always questions to ask. I said, strawberries are a symbol of love, because they were there, in my fridge, still sweet after all these years, and all these fights, and all these tears. They still grow in the yard where I go when she's out of town to check the mail and pick what's ripe of zucchinis and peppers and squash. And strawberries, still, after all these years, they're a symbol, but they're love, even if we can't talk without shouting. Still sweet when the friendship has soured. Alright, I think we should each do one more, and I want to go last. <laughs> Real. So unless I wants to go another one. Whoever's ready. Uh, well, I could go next. I've got one lined up. Okay. Okay. This is this one is in the the Hessler anthology. If you want to pick pick one up. My existence is enabled by many sins. The murders of my sisters and my brothers are writ in the lines of the facts of my birth. Violence is written into my nuclear code. My genetic line was conceived by imperial rape. The thefts of lands and of labor enriched my ancestors and their allies. My food is fed on suffering. My house is warmed by greed. And my body is carried on the back of a dying world. My existence is enabled by many sins. I cannot excuse a single one without excusing all. I cannot forgive myself without forgiving all who made me all who feed me, all who saved me, time and again. So I forgive them. I forgive the original sins of the world, for I so loved the world that I would sin once more just to preserve it, just to save it. Amen. See, I have a long commute every day, traffic is bad. <laughs> one of those really dry spells, I decided to write a poem every day about driving and commuting and, and everything that would come up that I could write about. And this is cheesy and weird, but I don't know why. I'm going to read it anyway, because here we go. It's called Hey Chevy. Hey Chevy, you are looking mighty fine today. It's painstakingly obvious that someone built you and rebuilt you with loving hands, piece by piece and part by part, one coat of paint at a time. 
to get you back into this pristine condition that I now have the pleasure of following. Hey Chevy, your historic license plate belies your age, but the shininess of your chrome tells another story. I can almost catch a glimpse of the driver, a smoother, older, chiseled, and gray James Dean, wearing a brown bomber jacket and still sporting that 50s do. I wouldn't be surprised to find a cigarette dangling from his lips while rocking out to Steppenwolf. Hey Chevy, I wonder what you saw in your heyday, the drag races you must have won, the jealousy you must have invoked, the makeout spots you must have occupied. If your odometer could talk, would it tell me about your travels, what stretches of road you've seen, from Detroit to Daytona Beach, Delaware to Denver, and a few weekend trips in between? Hey Chevy, where are you going? It's just after 6 a.m., so maybe the more appropriate question is, where have you been all night? Where are you going home to? Hey Chevy, if only men took as delicate care of their women as they do of their cars, when I am as old as you, I hope to be so spoiled, polished, refined, and desired. Hey, Chevy. I don't even like cars. <laughs> 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 Shrug. All right, so um, <clears throat> the uh, phrase, only poetry can save you now, came from the end of this poem. Uh, a couple of lines were stolen from Torch Song Trilogy, uh, starring... Harry, is it Feinstein? I don't remember. The guy with the raspy voice. Uh, he was uh, Mrs. Doubtfire's brother. Right. <laughs> yes, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I don't remember the name. Um, okay, anyway. The mirrors are covered so we don't see the pain on our faces. This anonymous ode to agony is only overshadowed by apocalyptic dread. Each step we take brings us further and further down the road. Each step we take is darkness. Each life we influence is a moth, flapping wings, knocking down dominoes, a chain reaction of hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, haiku, sonnets, idols can no longer exist. We shatter human speed records as we base jump from fiscal cliffs, crash through debt ceilings sponsored by an energy drink saying it will give us wings. We kill innocent people to carve our villanelles in infamy, and try to take the rights of others for life, liberty, and the pursuit of free verse bereavement. We can't leave well enough alone. This is the narrative of an atom bomb. A mushroom spread a mushroom shaped concrete verse erupts, radiation spreads. Soon it will cover us all. Soon all we will feel is the beating of hearts trying desperately to find someone to match our rhythm. Each line we write and speak will forever hurtle onward like the sound wave shot into space, attempting to make contact with an alien race. But until we make true, meaningful, lasting, compassionate contact with our own race, we will forever be relegated to ekphrastic observers and dirty limericks. Don't let the poetry of those not dedicated to love community tear you down. Grab the hand of someone close to you. Once you've found them, don't let them go. Hold them, no matter how many miles separate you, because this is as real as it will get. Honestly, expressing ourselves is our last hope. The next time you feel like saying I love you to someone, look in the mirror and say it to yourself and see if you believe it. Write your sonnets, haiku, free verse, villanelle, sestinas, canzones, limericks, narratives, ballads about odes. Only poetry can save you now. You can.